It's the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland, the largest building materials company of cement and construction material products on the West Coast. Now, here's Chris Sylvester, the voice of the Mustangs. All right, and we welcome you to another edition of the Mustang Insider presented by Cal Portland. This podcast brought to you by Dignity Health, offering all-star treatment you can trust. To learn more about their health care services, visit DignityHealth.org slash Central Coast. The big talk on the Central Coast this fall around Cal Poly has to be the women's soccer team. They sit in sole possession of first place in the Big West just a few weeks away from the conference tournament. It, it feels like each and every week here the last month or so that a player from the team has been garnering some sort of Big West honor. We're joined by the reigning Big West Offensive Player of the Week, Nikki Truco, taking some time out of her busy schedule to chat with us. Nikki, thanks so much for your time. You guys have gotten off to a great start, not only overall in the season, but especially in conference play. After having almost two years off, how does it feel to be in first place at this juncture of the season? It feels so incredible. I'm so proud of every single person on our team. I think that this last year especially was really hard with COVID, having to practice every single morning. We had 7 a.m. practices, weights every single day, and we didn't have that, like, thing to look forward to, like, playing the games, like, the part where it all pays off. So I think that all of our hard work this last year and even the year before that, like, it really is showing this year how we're just – we have that, like, drive to play, and we're just so excited. And I think that's just really why we're succeeding so well this year. Yeah, Cal Poly women's soccer on a roll. It's kind of hard to believe that the final home game is on the docket here this weekend. And uh, certainly you hope it's not the final game for you guys this year at Spano Stadium because the first place finisher in the Big West uh, gets to host the conference tournament. And I know that you guys are taking this match by match, game by game, day by day. Uh, but I I'm sure that thought has started to maybe creep in to your mind a little bit you sit at five and one in the big west nine and six overall coming off two straight victories uh the only loss coming at the hands of your twin sister and we're gonna uh, <laughs> talk about that in, in just a moment there, there are a lot of great rivalries in the big west and the truco sister rivalry has really become a big one uh, the last couple of seasons but i mentioned all that time off between the end of 2019 where you guys closed out with a win on senior day that was obviously an emotional match that afternoon at Spano Stadium. But how tough was it to, to go through 2020, the uncertainty for a while of maybe or maybe not having a season? And then it was announced uh, early last year that there wouldn't be any type of season, even in the spring, as maybe you guys had hoped. So you really had to, to master patience. But it seems like you guys took a big leap between 2019 and what we've seen in 2021. So, so where did that come from? Was it all the eagerness of uh, trying to get back on the field? Did, did you guys use that time a, a, to, to bond a little bit more as a team and, and just get in better shape? Like what, what happened in that almost two year gap where you guys weren't playing at all? Um, yeah, I definitely think that that time was honestly good for us. I think it's something that we really used to our advantage, whereas like maybe some teams in our conference that was hard. Um, but for us, I really think it just came from like essentially the group of girls that we're playing with right now is the same group of girls since my freshman year. Basically, we've gotten a lot of obviously we have the current freshmen, and the sophomores that have added a lot to our team. But it's really the same. Hardly anyone has left because a lot of um, of our fifth year stayed. So I think it's just we've all gotten really comfortable playing with each other. It's kind of like my freshman year. We were kind of getting used to it and just a bunch of different playing styles. And then I think just that time off, especially like we've just really gotten comfortable playing with each other. We like know each other's strengths and we like play to those strengths. And yeah, I think honestly, it was really hard. Not like I said, not getting to play at all last year. So I think we're all just like super motivated and pumped. And I think something else that really motivated us too was we were actually like ranked. I think the coaches all got together in big west and i think we were ranked like supposedly in a predicted like eighth or something like that something low and we all took that to heart and we were like they don't know what we've been doing this whole last year like we've been working so hard and like we're gonna prove everyone wrong so i think that was a big thing for our team and also obviously that was a hard time and we definitely got so much closer as a team our team chemistry is so good this year every single person in like every single class like we're all best friends we all hang out we do everything together and I think that time just made us even closer which obviously you can see on the field. Nikki Truco is the reigning Big West Offensive Player of the Week 
sophomore from Cal Poly women's soccer, first place in the Big West Cal Poly women's soccer. And, and I know all the hype going into the weekend is around the men's soccer blue-green rivalry game, but hey, perhaps your last chance, and we certainly hope not. We certainly hope that the Big West tournament is in San Luis Obispo this year. But if for whatever reason it's not, keep that same energy that you guys have for the blue-green game Saturday, roll that over into Sunday, right? A noon start. I, I know it's early for you guys. It's early for the fans, but get out there, support Cal Poly women's soccer, help them win a big West championship in 2021. Hey, you're, you're out of California high school, San Ramon, California up North. I mentioned just a moment ago that your sister also played soccer with you up there at uh, California high school in San Ramon. Unlike yourself, she went in a different direction after high school. She's a Division I soccer player, too, but she went to one of our rival schools, and that's UC Davis um, up in Northern California, a little bit closer to home. So uh, at what point in high school did you make the decision to commit to Cal Poly? And at any point, did you think you'd be playing alongside your sister, or, or did you know pretty early on in high school that you guys would maybe be suiting up for different teams at the next level? <laughs> yeah, so growing up, me and my sister, her name's Lexi, we had always been on the same club team, we played on the same high school team, we had all the same friends, we just always did everything together, so I think we always kind of knew that college was going to be our one time to kind of go our separate ways and like be our own individual people and do our own thing, but we obviously played so well together in club, like we had a really good twin connection on the field, so that was something that we were sad about. But um, I committed to play college before her. So I committed my junior year to Cal Poly. And then she didn't commit to Davis until late in her senior year. She actually wasn't even planning on playing college soccer. And then something happened. And then she's so happy she is, obviously. But yeah, so we kind of always knew that we wanted to go to different schools. But it's definitely been interesting. Playing each other was so crazy. Our freshman year, that was the first time we ever played against each other. Cal Poly won. But then they took the dub this year. So now we're one and one. So senior year will be the big telltale and that'll be at Spanos, which will be super fun because she hasn't gone to come play at Spanos yet because they've both been at Davis. So you had the bragging rights for almost two years and, and yes, I, I think you could, I think you could eliminate any type of bragging right she has if you guys win the conference, right? I mean, totally, totally. Let, let her have that game, but yeah. as long as you guys take the big West crown, <laughs> I mean, you can live with, you can live with that result. I can live uh, with it. Uh, up in Davis. Again, Nikki Truco is our guest here on the Mustang Insider. You were a Big West Conference all-freshman team selection in 2019. I know that 2019 campaign fell short of uh, your guys' expectations, yeah. but how much did you learn from your first college season on the pitch, and uh, how have you guys kind of corrected some of those mistakes in 2019 and, and turned those into some things that you guys have had success with this season? Yeah, um, I think, like I said, 2019, we definitely had a young kind of starting lineup, like a lot of freshmen, sophomores. And so I think we just weren't completely comfortable playing each with each other. But then I think as the season progressed, you can tell by like our wins that we definitely got more used to it and kind of played more cohesively. But I think we really, just, like I said, used that COVID year to just, we played so much. We scrimmaged against each other every single Friday, I think it was, in Spanos. Like, we were constantly playing with each other, constantly playing against each other. Like, so we just really got to know each other inside and out, which clearly helped. But I think we've kind of just figured out, like, our game and how we play. And we really try to play good soccer. Um, unlike some teams in the Big West, I feel like that just play, like, kickball and, like, long balls. Like, we definitely try to play. And we've definitely found our strengths, which is, like finding the balls wide and like our outside wingers do a really, really good job about getting, driving the end line and driving balls across. And I think we've gotten good about like in the center, in the mid, like in the inside the box, like me and Camille have gotten better about like knowing where to be for those crosses so we can finish those. Um, I really think that like each goal that we score is such a team effort and that all of our goals and stuff are really just an end product of how good our team plays together. Hey, you mentioned uh, the, the goals and, and how important it's, it's been to kind of set the tone early in matches. I mean, you did that twice last week, scoring in the first uh, 10 minutes of the match to kind of set the tone in both of those victories at home. You have eight for the season now. How important is it to kind of strike first, get those shots on goals early in matches, set the tone, 
make the opponent uncomfortable. I mean, how big is that from a momentum standpoint? I think it's definitely important scoring first. It really gives us like that momentum to just keep going, especially there's been some games where we've scored in like two minutes, three minutes. And I think that's really just like right off the bat, just to know that you have that in like that one and just need to keep, keep possession and just keep getting more. in. I think that's just a really, really good way to just drive the momentum for the rest of the game. Um, yeah. Four more matches on the regular season docket in the big West. We mentioned it's the home finale on Sunday, this Sunday, just after the blue green rivalry on the men's side at Spanos, it's a noon start. It's youth day. So everybody 13 and under gets in for free. No reason that we can't get at least a few thousand on hand there. Spanos Sunday, high noon, UC San Diego. They make their first trip to Spanos stadium uh, on the women's soccer side. So uh, greet them with a, a little San Luis Obispo. Hello. And, and a victory, hopefully. And then it's on the road at Santa Barbara, at Long Beach State, at UC Irvine, other teams contending for the top of the Big West. If there's one thing you'd like to see this group accomplish over the next couple of weeks, what is it? Um, I mean, obviously, it's going to be a, a challenging couple of games. But honestly, I think we need to see it as an opportunity to pull more ahead of all those teams rather than being like, oh, these are all of our best teams we have left to play. Like, I think we should use that, just be excited that like, this is where we really secure, like we're the number one team in the conference. So I think as long as we just keep playing together and keep playing our game, not changing based on who we're playing against, just being confident. I think that's the biggest thing I want to see. And just everyone, I just love how supportive our team is of each other. Something I love about our team is that we really just don't care who puts it in the back of the net. Like we're all just so competitive and we want to win and we're just always like so supportive of each other. And I just love how like we don't have one person that scores goals or one person that does the assisting or like we have just so much depth on our team. And I just think like I really just want everyone to just play their best and play so well together for these next couple of games and just win from here on out and win the conference. And you guys had your senior day already. So you can uh, kind of put those emotions aside, if you will, a little bit more. It still is going to be emotional when you think of the <laughs> prospect of that perhaps being some of your teammates' final game at Spano Stadium. But the nice thing is you guys sitting in sole possession of first place, you control your destiny to the finish line. So if you guys take care of business, you assure yourselves at least one more match at home after this Sunday. Nikki, one more thing for you, because it's always fun to kind of read these player bios online. You were on the side of the officials. You were a referee, a soccer referee <laughs> for a little bit uh, in your high school years, or maybe a little bit before that, going back to the middle school years. So when a call goes against you guys, do you have a little more sympathy for the referees being that you were one for a few years? I think I do have more sympathy. Honestly, I think I would get more nervous to ref games than I would be to play games. I would be so scared that the parents would yell at me. So I would say I have a little more sympathy for them. It's a hard job. Hey, nobody <laughs> goes goes to the games to cheer for the officials, or at least not that we know of, because they don't make themselves known in the crowd because one bad call, and then you've got everybody going against you. Hey, this is Nikki Truco. She is our reigning Big West Offensive Player of the Week in the women's soccer spectrum. Thanks so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule, and uh, we hope to pack Spanos as much as we can Sunday for that final home regular season match. Of course. Thank you. All right, this podcast brought to you by Dignity Health, offering all-star treatment you can trust. To learn more about their healthcare services, visit dignityhealth.org slash Central Coast. That does it for this week's edition of the Mustang Insider. We'll see you next time, powered by Learfield. This has been the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland with a commitment to environmental leadership that has made the organization stronger and is the primary choice of contractors. The Mustang Insider Show. The preceding has been a Learfield's presentation on the Cal Poly Sports Network.